So welcome to the afternoon session. So in the afternoon we have a, a Mr. Shirap Tenzinla who will be going to speak about the development through research in Bhutan. And the Shirap Tenzinla ki jushi didire. And the poyi nala ya shimju ki lamne sorry ko yargiya kante chiyore se di tola kong sunyare. Uh, do, uh, Mr. Shirab Tanzinla has studied BSc Pharmacy from Philippines, MSc in Quality Assurance and GMB from Australia. Uh, presently, he worked at the Swarikpa Research and Manufacturing Forum since 2001. And the Shirab Tanzinla is the the Philippines, the the so please uh, I request the uh, Mr. Sheriff Tanzila to start your presentation. Good example. Uh, uh, at the outset, uh, before I start my presentation, I do not have SOA Rikpa education, <laughs> but I have a long association with this science. I've been working in the manufacturing of SOA Rikpa medicine in Bhutan since 2001. So this is my 18th year running. But uh, uh, if you have a specific SOA Rikpa questions, uh, I may not be able to answer you. So basically, the organizing committee invited me to highlight some development of SOA Rikpa in Bhutan through researches. Although uh, I agree with uh, Dr. Tenzin Chodonla uh, in challenges, uh, we are uh, going in a different direction uh, to uh, start with. So let me start uh, briefly. Historically, um, Soa Rikpa uh, was founded uh, in 1616 when Shabdung Rinpoche uh, came to Bhutan. But officially, uh, it started formally recognition in 1967 uh, when His Majesty the Third King commanded the formation. Since then, in 1968, a small dispensary was established in the Chinchueling, a place in Thimbu, capital. Then in 1971, a training center was started. Mm. Then in 1978, uh, a five years bachelor's degree program, for, we call it Drungso. Um, the Soarikpa practitioners in Bhutan are known as Drungso. Uh, so, and this uh, dispensary was upgraded to hospital in 1979. In 1982, the mechanized uh, traditional medicine production was started with the support of WHO. Uh, before that, it was like a cottage industry. Each practitioner used to go to the hills, mountains, collect their own raw materials, and compound mm, themselves. Uh, but yes, from 1982, the mechanized production started. And in 1988, uh, the unit was upgraded as the National Institute of Traditional Medicine. And in 1998, uh, we had the Institute of Traditional Medicine Services with three functional units, the Training Center, uh, National Institute of Traditional Medicine, which imparts education, so education. Then we had the National Hospital and and the pharmaceutical and research unit where we do manufacturing of Sovarikpa medicine as well as R&D activities. Further, in 2013, mm, uh, the go government has approved the formation of department. Now we have the Department of Traditional Medicine uh, under the Minister of Health. And then uh, the teaching hospital I mean, the National Traditional Medicine Hospital was uh, redesignated as a teaching hospital to support the Soarikpa education uh, provided by the 
uh, now Faculty of Traditional Medicine under Gesegepo University of Medical Sciences of Bhutan. Then uh, this pharmaceutical and research unit is renamed as Menjong Sorik Pharmaceuticals uh, uh, as a state-owned enterprise, um, uh, not under the government setup because it's an industry. Then this uh, Faculty of Traditional Medicine is now uh, received a certificate of accreditation from the Bhutan Accreditation Council. Uh, to highlight uh, some mandates of the TM sector, um, uh, particularly uh, in the bullet number two, uh, the main mandate is to strengthen R&D for evidence-based traditional medicine services, and also to enrich TM traditional medicine or Soripa medicine through research on local spiritual healing and ethno-medical practices. Uh, the department is also responsible for developing the research capacity and research skills in traditional medicine, um, and also um, responsible for promoting the infrastructure and facility to make enable conditions for the researchers. And in the education sector, um, the Faculty of Traditional Medicine is now under the university ambit. Uh, they offers the um, five years bachelor's degree program, um, known as the uh, Drungso program. Then we also have a three-year diploma program for uh, assistant clinical officer. And the unique uh, program we have is the integrated Soric pharmacy, uh, where we ha we use uh, Western pharmaceutical education and the Soric medicine. To it's a hybrid hybrid program to cater to the manufacturer, manufacturers of Sauric medicine. And recently, to further promote and spur researches in Sauric uh, they have introduced um, a master's degree program um, in traditional medicine through research mode, not through coursework, but through research. Basically, the TM in Bhutan is considered as one of the most sustainable methods of healthcare delivery, as uh, all the medicines, the ingredients, the manufacturing, uh, are, and the HR are all developed within the country, unlike the Western medicine, where we have to import the medicine, the doctors and all are trained outside because we don't have medical institute, uh, especially at the uh, undergrad level. Uh, this um, uh, traditional medicine so a medical system not only adds dimensions to the nation's healthcare system, but also provides an alternative choice of um, service to the patient. So uh, I will highlight the special features of Buddhist traditional medicine or so medicine in Bhutan setting uh, in the later side. Uh, this, uh, our traditional medicine sector caters to about 23.4% of the population from about 66 traditional medicine units. Some special features in uh, traditional medicine in Bhutan is it's fully integrated with the modern medicine. Uh, uh, the traditional medicine services, they follow the same health plans and policies of the Ministry of Health. Uh, the traditional physicians or practitioners are treated at par with the modern doctors in terms of pay, salary, grade, and everything. Uh, there is uh, no distinction, mm. and there is a mutual understanding of both the system by different uh, practitioners. The district, the TM units in districts are all under the same administrative control of the uh, hospital health sector. In fact, even physically, they are roofed on the same hospital. So the, you as a patient has a choice either to seek a traditional practitioner or a Western medicine from the same counter. Uh, so it provides as an alternative choice to the people. So, but uh, our all our practitioners, including the medicine production and medicines, are all regulated by the drug regulatory authority. So, this traditional medicine, in fact, plays a very significant role socially, culturally in Bhutan. So far, uh, we have uh, 66 uh, traditional medicine units um, under uh, all the districts, including uh, at the sub-district level and at the basic health unit level. 
is totaling about 66 units. Uh, these are the range of services they provide, uh, like uh, outpatient department, we have all kinds of uh, services there. Then in therapies, we have all this uh, chulum and langlum, this, uh, then affection therapy, hydrotherapies, gold and silver, silver needle therapy, cauterization, moxibitions, and for, uh, for Lenga services, uh, we have both OPD and inpatient services. Uh, what uh, supports all these development efforts in Bhutan is uh, these policies. The Medicine Act of Kingdom Bhutan uh, um, only recognizes uh, modern medicine and Sawarikpa medicine. Uh, is yet the other alternative medicine system like uh, Ayush, other Ayush products, uh, Chinese, and are not yet <laughs> recognized. Uh, and the national drug policy also firmly supports tradition medicine development. Then the most important is the constitution of the Kingdom of Bhutan uh, so promises the services of free traditional medicine services to the people. And we have the national health policy, the economic development policy, and the national strategic plan for traditional medicine sector. But uh, why? Um, Research is important to maybe uh, Dr. Tinsen Jordan has highlighted to find answers to the questions on efficacy, quality, and safety posed by the regulatory bodies. Because when we apply for the registration of our Sawaripa medicines with the regulators, they demand all those uh, documents, like the in the morning presentation, Dr. Katosh has highlighted the requirements of dossiers and all those things. Then to generate this evidence-based documentation, to preserve the traditional knowledge or Sawaripa knowledge, uh, to ensure the sustainability and continuity of the knowledge, and also to reap potential economic ben benefits, uh, like uh, uh, even to discover a new molecule or new new, new can, anti-cancer agents and all those things, and to discover these uh, uh, remedies for emerging diseases like lifestyle-related diseases. These are some of the conditions in our country. Mm, we have uh, research and uh, we have a research and development laboratory as well as again research lab under the department who oversees the, um, who drafts and oversees the research policy uh, and also promotes the research. Then we have the national, um, at the national level, we have the traditional medicine research advisory committee comprising of uh, um, Western doctors also, like allopathic doctors, uh, neurosurgeons and psychiatry, psychiatrists and all we have in this board, including the traditional medicine practitioners. And this, uh, we, uh, we continue to develop and build capacity, research capacity, especially through good, good clinical practices, then re operational research guidelines and all. Then we have the master's degree program to promote uh, research again. Then to um, promote your research outcomes and all those things, we have internationally pre-reviewed uh, medical journal called Bhutan Health Journal. Then for novice, uh, researchers like us, uh, we have the Menjong Sorik Journal to publish your articles uh, and findings. And, uh, and to do research, we have a good resource base for research as well. So we have uh, like uh, in Sorik Patex, uh, you have more than 3,000 types of materials to be used. About 600 of them are identified in Bhutan. And currently, we use about um, 300 ingredients to produce about 20 metric tons of traditional medicine to cater to the um, traditional medicine service needs of the country. The main resource base, around 90% is medicinal plant, and about 85% of them are sourced within the country. This research in Sawarikpa was initially initiated in 1990 through, uh, 1990 through Italian uh, NGO called uh, Disermo Disbi. Uh, we had the full-fledged animal models, uh, animal studies and all. 
but uh, uh, due to some sentiment because uh, the <laughs> animal studies and Sorikpa doesn't go well because it's derived from the Buddhist philosophy, we had to discontinue this animal study. Uh, but uh, this clinical study is still in infancy, but, uh, but it is further streamlined without the um, animal in vivo study, but in, in vitro in 1998 under pharmaceutical research unit. Uh, although the initial activities were focused in developing production and quality control system, uh, in setting up basic facilities, uh, we still uh, are challenged by inadequate facilities, infrastructures, uh, and manpower. Uh, so, like I said, the, especially the clinical front in the clinical studies, uh, we are still in infancy, although it's initiated under a long time ago. So to further highlight the role of uh, my organization, we do research and development activities. We focus mainly in product development. Uh, we manage to uh, screen um, traditional medicine. Um, we are, uh, because it's very complex, like, uh, uh, to do clinical studies in complex formulation, multi-ingredient formulation, we are going from an uh, individual ingredient. We get the lead idea from the SOARIC uh, uses and all those things, then we try to isolate chemical compounds. So uh, uh, we managed to study for 11 high altitude, higher elevation medicinal plants, screen them for active chemical moiety or uh, active pharmaceutical components for potential product development. Then we also do resource mapping. Uh, we identify where in order to sustain and to do cultivation trials. So we have seven, 11 areas we have done surveys and 30 species of them are in under cultivation, those vulnerable and uh, extinct, extinction prone uh, materials we are being cultivated under tissue culture system. Uh, we, um, through this uh, research and development program, um, uh, we are using now this modern GMP principles to process all those products. Currently, we have 134 products that constitute as the national essential medicine and 19 other additional health promoting products like herbal teas and massage oils, massage candles, and all those things. So, Traditionally, they have only tang, che, ribu only, right, the uh, dosage form. So we, we did the standardization, and now we produce uh, this soaripa medicine in capsule form, in tablet dosage forms, in ointments, in teas, and herbal bath mixture, and even in paste and drops, even eye drops and all those things. So these are some of the activities we did. We have um, research done on developing monograph on traditional medicine formulation for 116 products. We have pre-processing methods for raw materials of 33 ingredients. We have test methods developed for quality control of raw materials. Then we have a monograph on medicine plants of Bhutan, which has 40 high altitude medicine plants in two volumes. Uh, we have... Uh, monograph on precious minerals and metals comprising of 227 materials. <coughs> then we also do uh, coding and standardization of SOA RIPA uh, nomenclature, uh, identification with the botanical nomenclature, about 300 medicine plants that we use currently. Then we also have a herbarium species of around 116 high altitude medicine plants uh, and about 101 lower elevation medicinal plants. Then we have, uh, we also produce uh, guidebooks on high altitude medicinal plants and low altitude medicinal plants for our farmers or from our pickers of the herb medicine herbs to aid in their business. Then we also have developed a material medica on low altitude medicinal plants. Uh, then we also developed a guideline for good collection practices these are some of the publications, uh, the monograph on digital medicine. This is, uh, 
sorry. So the monograph layout has this many, we have the product title, definition, the formulary composition, product description, the production processes, the identification tests like uh, uh, the identification of the finger, uh, TLC fingerprints and all those things. Then we have test methods, then storage conditions, so labeling, and we have the um, uh, appendices of uh, TLC plates and all those things so that uh, you have the reference when you do the quality control. The monograph, uh, we have two volumes, uh, but uh, still, although there are challenges, there is also potential for soric power medicine. Uh, research poten potentials are there. Uh, there is a potential for discovery of new drugs through understanding the different mechanism of drug action and additive and synergistic effects of the multi-ingredients. Uh, there is a study to do on ethnopharmacology, bioprospecting um, uh, through to develop phytopharmaceuticals, then clinical trials. Um, because uh, soa rigpa has been used for centuries, uh, even the to do clinical trials, we don't have to do preclinical trials because it's been used. So we have a lead in that area to gain some years or months in the research. So if you have the basis, then to do biological and agricultural research on cultivation and uh, in uh, tissue culture uh, thing, or in also in biotechnology. Uh, then we uh, we also do some research on the substitution of species such as like uh, to use um, uh, in place of Lartzi and Domti, the animal ingredients, which is um, uh, internationally banned for use. We do plant herb substitution studies also. So um, we have been studying, uh, we have, uh, since 1990, we have studied uh, for the clinical trials, we managed only a few formulations, like uh, Yuang upper for uh, diabetes and all. But um, for substitution of must year, uh, uh, we, we have done extensive studies there. And uh, the institute is also in the process of translating soric text to make it relevant uh, for the regulators also, they need this translation because uh, the text in classical language or the Cheki or the Sanskrit, whatever the authoritative texts are available are uh, in the uh, language that is not uh, understandable by the regulator, so they demand such. So we are continuously doing this standardization of quality parameters, and we also develop new products uh, uh, like uh, Aurovedic uh, proprietary medicine. We are also pursuing the SOARI for proprietary medicine. And we also do some clinical studies on hot springs and minchus and suchus. So how we approach this research is uh, <laughs> basically we do uh, through, we select a medicinal um, uh, ingredient based on soa ripa text. Then we do the uh, research, uh, bibliography research. Then we screen for chemical activities. Uh, uh, extraction and segmentation. Then we do separation and purification of active substance. Then we do the chemical structure and uh, possible drug design. We are yet to be there in synthesis and drug design. We are only up to chemical structure so far because of uh, lack of uh, facilities and animal models. Some of the highlights, again, uh, uh, we managed to, a friend of ours who did his PhD, he managed to discover some potential anti-malaria compound from high altitude medicine plants, particularly the Meconopsis simplifocia, Econitum orichrysum, and Caudalis calentia. Uh, uh, these uh, molecules, uh, it has been filed for patent in Bhutan um, from Meconopsis. Uh, then we, we have developed a number of uh, products such as uh, anti-wrinkle cream, uh, herbal teas, um, and in uh, perfume essence and fragrance, massage oils and all through um, uh, access and benefit sharing scheme. Uh, 
we access the genetic material from our local collectors to promote um, uh, uh, the sustainability or conservation of the medicine plants because most of our raw materials are sourced from the wild craft, uh, it is uh, important that we sustain or conserve the medicinal resources. So we, after commercialization of these creams and all, we share certain percentage of our profit with our local partners or communities. So, and also we uh, share certain benefits to the conservation fund also, so that there is a continuity of medicine plant supplies especially for the uh, genetic material that is sourced from the locality. Then uh, there is some, some level of clinical studies uh, for the knee osteoarthritis, migraine, and ringworm um, infection. Sorry. Oh, sorry. So some of the, our ongoing research efforts are developing, again, the monographs on high altitude medicine plants for the remaining uh, medicinal herbs. Uh, then we we are still uh, doing the resource mapping and digitization of uh, our um, uh, medicinal plant resources in the wild. Uh, we also are developing and updating our herbarium specimens. Then we are also developing and uh, documenting the registry for local and spiritual healing practices. Uh, then we also do some um, digitization of the traditional medicine artifacts and uh, translating this uh, text into national language. Uh, maybe uh, the challenges are almost same to uh, Dr. Tenzin Chirunla. Uh, it is uh, uh, the complexity of methods of study because we cannot uh, replicate the studies done in the biomedicine or uh, the Western medicine there is a complexity. Uh, even to build the quality parameters, uh, the reproducibility uh, is still a challenge. Um, but uh, more than that, it is uh, constrained by lack of um, infrastructure and facilities within the country, then technical uh, expertise and investment in R&D. And there is a limited scope, especially in Bhutan context, to do in vivo studies because of the religious sentiments uh, in uh, destroying the animal <laughs> and all this. Uh, then there is uh, IPR related issues, the process and the cause, and the re due recognition to the researchers because SOA RIPA is um, knowledge for humanity. So one cannot patent it and claim unless there is a new or unless like uh, Dr. Tenzin highlighted uh, how the patenting is done. So uh, uh, there is a very thin line because if your research findings are based on SOA RIPA, then uh, the, whether you have a new molecule or a new process or a new use, uh, it is still debatable on the patent granting of patent. But this discourages the researchers because there is no recognition. So we need to balance uh, these things. Uh, the balancing act is very tricky here. Uh, and there is a uncertainty in toxicity studies, especially those involving the mercury and mercury compounds, elemental mercury products. No? Uh, and there is a high risk of contamination, especially in the herbal-based products. It gen generates lots of does in all, and the study outcome is affected because of this. And there is also risk in bioprospecting. In the, um, although we have the rich biological or biogenetic materials, we need to collaborate with uh, international partners where there is a facilities, where there is a capacity. But uh, 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 if there is a substantial finding or a good finding, they may not share with us. So they, they are the biopiracy and all those risks are associated. So, but all said and done, research is hopeful, I think, is a hope for the future to bridge gap between the past and the present using ancient wisdom with the modern technology to marry science with religion and philosophy, to ensure safety and efficacy of the treatment, to ensure sustainability 
of the services and natural resources and to save traditional soaripa knowledge and to hand over to our future generation. So what is the way forward? Strategic planning to conduct research, resource mobilization and collaboration, I think, um, uh, human resource development, upgradation of facilities, improving documentation, because uh, 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 I don't know about the sorry, but practitioner, practitioners in uh, India and here in Tibet and all, but uh, in our uh, Bhutan, uh, they are very poor in documenting. <laughs> Even if they have a good outcome, the clinical evolution, uh, they don't keep documents. So it's all hearsay, but it's, it doesn't serve any purpose when it comes to regulators. So we need to build uh, linkages and collaboration for transfer of technology. Uh, such forum, the international conference, may be one such forum to share and collaborate and uh, find a middle path in, in authenticating the Soaripa science for the, so another way is recognizing and patenting. So touch uh, Dele. Thank you so much. Now we will have a 10 minutes question and answer session. Noted, noted. Um, no clinical study, but some level of study is there. Like the, uh, we first check the um, water, the hot spring uh, constraints, then we do some verification only, not at the clinical level, uh, because uh, clinical study involves lots of steps, like uh, the clinical phase one, phase two, all those things. But uh, like I said, um, especially with regard to traditional knowledge for that matter, any traditional medicine, like be it so or or Ayush kind of Indian system of medicine, we don't have to do preclinical studies because it has been given to healthy people. Because in the preclinical study, first you have to give the medicine to the healthy people so that there is no safe, I mean, adverse effect or death. <coughs> so that part is not required, especially in, with regard to Bhutan's law, uh, research law. So, so uh, we, had, we, we get the jump start in the clinical studies. But still, it's a challenge. <laughs> uh, but uh, so, uh, such a menu is relatively simpler than doing medicine, medicine clinical trials for of the formulations. University in medical If I understood correctly. <laughs> You're asking why the university is named as a Kesa Gepo. Um, in the, um, how do you say, in respect to our Pip King. Our Pip King is Jingmi Kesa Namge Wanchu. So the university is given the title of Kesa Gepo, University of Medical Sciences of Bhutan. Uh, the, it's uh, His Majesty's name. King's name, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a uh, Kesa, not Kesa. It's a uh, Kesa, Kesa, K H E S A R, Kesa. Mm. Yeah, I I have few Bhutanese who can translate for me, even if you ask in Tibetan. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Couldn't hear you. Uh, do you this uh, practice this mercury purification? Do you do yes. uh, uh, this? We don't have. We have been. Um, uh, we had got few support from Minsekang in Dharamsala in building capacity for detoxification of mercury and mercury processing, but still we are not confident <coughs> in manufacturing this uh, uh, the mercury products. Uh, also, because uh, 
mainly because uh, the regulatory requires further tests. Unlike other herbal medicine, they scrutinize more on mercury <laughs> compounds. So we need to generate lots of documents. So there is um, one case. Um, uh, he, he he works uh, in UN in Geneva, but he took some uh, rinchen rib from some monk or uh, in Bhutan, and he got uh, lead lead poisoning. So from there on, was the regulators <laughs> more tighter with us. So we we have for time being we are not producing any. Uh, Rinchin ribs or medicine. Uh, so it seems like there is no more question. So, uh, <coughs> so I, on behalf of the organizing team and all the participants here, would like to thank you so much for your important research information and also the wonderful presentation. So uh, here we have the uh, the vice president of uh, Central Council of Tibetan Medicine is going to. Uh, of the Qatar and the Memento.